Rahman Rahim, Jesper Forna, Chief Executive of, Executive of National Disaster Management Authority, Mr. Hassan Hassan, Chancellor Dr. Mahmoud Shawzi, Vice Chancellor Dr. I. Christian and Adam, Head of SCAP South and Southwest Asia Office, Ms. Nikiko Kanaka, Resident Representative of New Entity Maldives, Mr. Enrico Galizia, Foreign Dignitaries, Guests, Presenters, Participants, Invitees. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And a very good morning to all of you. My name is Nadia Abdullah. It is my pleasant duty to welcome you to the opening event of the capacity building on national and sub-national planning for sustainable disaster risk reduction, climate change adaptation, and mitigation workshop. This crucial initiative takes place from January 30th to February 1st, 2024, at the Maldives National University campus here in Malay. We are honored to gather both in person and virtually via MS Teams for this high risk event. We have begun our proceedings with the recitation of the Holy Quran recited by lecturer of the Faculty of China and Law, Abdurrahman Yunus. Thank you, Abdurrahman Yunus. We are honored to have with us the head of SCAP South and Southwest Asia Office, Ms. Nikiko Sanaka. Let me invite Ms. Nikiko Sanaka for the welcome remark. Ms. Nikiko Sanaka. Mr. Hisan Hassan, the Chief Executive for the National Disaster Management Authority. Dr. Aishad Shehnaz Adam, the Vice Chancellor of the Maldives National University. Mr. Ibrahim Bimra, the Minister of State for Climate Change, Environment and Energy, and also the Maldives Meteorological Service. Uh, and um, all the um, participants, colleagues, um, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good morning to you. I'm really pleased to be here and I'd like to wish everybody a warm welcome. There are um, participants here and also online. First, let me take the opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the Maldives National University for hosting this event, the National Disaster Management Authority and the Maldives Meteorological Services for the close partnership and also to our UN colleagues, particularly from UNDP and the Resident Coordinator's Office for the collaboration throughout the UN joint program. Countries and people of the Asia and Pacific region have been through numerous obstacles and challenges in recent years that have stalled or regressed progress towards the sustainable development goals. Global crises such as the COVID pandemic and Ukraine and Gaza wars have had detrimental impact on trade and supply chain, businesses and livelihoods, government and household finances. Amidst this, climate change is a significant and growing issue and hazard. Asia and the Pacific is one of the world's most disaster impacted regions. In South and Southwest Asia, that is under the purview of our SCAP sub-regional office, climate-induced hazards have visibly increased in incidence, scale, and intensity in the forms of floods, cyclones, glacial lake outbursts, flash floods, droughts, sand, and dust storms. Governments have a complexity of interconnected challenges that are not only costly, but require holistic, balanced, and risk-informed approaches to development. Particular attention and care for vulnerable population groups, such as those in high-risk geographical areas, or in poverty or social disadvantage and marginalization, becomes even more important. In this regard, I'm really happy that um, my colleague uh, from UNHCR, the uh, Office of the High Commissioner of Refugees, uh, Ms. Sareti Siani, 
um, who's based in New Delhi but covers motors, is also here on her first visit. And um, she's looking into issues of refugees and uh, migrants, migrations with our country team. So in that sense, you know, they, they are a vulnerable group that we also like to you know, include in our um, analysis and deliberations. As a low-lying island nation, Maldives is among the most vulnerable countries in the world. It is regularly exposed to hydrometeorological hazards such as drought storms, floods caused by monsoonal heavy rain, and storm swells. swells. Of course, the rising sea level is an immediate and current actually, challenge for this country. Based on the project's findings, we expect an increase in the adverse effects of climate change. As an example, around 50% of the total population of Maldives is like to, likely to be exposed to the intensified risk of flooding under the business as usual scenario and around 55% under the worst case scenario by 2060, with the maximum number of exposed people residing in Male City. Building resilience is therefore of utmost importance and there are solutions that need to be carefully planned, financed and implemented. With up-to-date and close proximity geospatial data and tools for decision-making, our joint initiative with NDMA and Meteorological Services is a contribution to strengthen weather forecasting, disaster risk reduction, including early warning and climate adaptive development planning and implementation at island and national levels. We hope this event and follow-up actions will enable Maldives to pursue a sustainable and climate resilient development trajectory. Um, I hope this uh, workshop will be useful to you all and um, hope that the follow-up actions out of it would also contribute to this country's uh, safe, resilient um, development. So thank you very much for um, coming and for having us uh, here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Isiko Tanaka, for your inspiring remarks. Next, I would like to invite President Representative of UNDP Morning, Mr. Enrico Galigoya, to address this forum. Mr. Enrico Galigoya. Okay. So, unfortunately, we don't have Mr. Enrico Galigoya here, so I will move to the next item of the agenda. Um, may I now request to the State Minister of State for Climate Change, Environment and Energy for the opening remarks, State Minister Mr. Ibrahim Nimra. Bismillah rahman rahim um, Ms. Nikki Tanaka, head of SCAP South and Southwest Asia Office. Mr. Enrico Gavelia, President Representative of UNDP Maldives. Uh, experts and participants from the adults and various government institutions. Assalamu alaikum. As you know, uh, Maldives is a low lying nation with around, uh, around 1,200 uh, 1, or so uh, islands, 80% of which are only one meter big above sea level. And it's also in one of the most disaster prone areas of the world. Maldives is amongst the most vulnerable countries to the impact of climate change. Other nations, other low lying coastal communities are also uh, exposed to natural hazards, including tropical cyclones, flooding, heat waves, drought, strong winds, rough seas, just to name a few. Our observed climate data shows that the temperatures of the ocean and the temperatures of the atmosphere is increasing at an alarming rate. These are the main drivers of climate change. Global, cli global warming and climate change is expected to further increase in magnitude and frequency of high impact weather events, hence exaggerating the adverse effects of livelihood of the communities at risk. In addition, Rapid economic growth and population expansion over the coming decades will increase the exposure of the vulnerability of these communities. 
We need to understand the risk associated with these hazards and identify the risk hotspots, which is crucial for policy makers in order to develop evidence-based action plans in order to mitigate the impact of climate change. It is important that the technical capacity of the relevant government institutions and other stakeholders in the country is strengthened. I believe that the series of capacity building training workshops that we are participating in and organized under this joint SDG project would contribute towards achieving this objective. Public outreach and awareness programs are equally as important for the community to understand the consequences of climate change. We have to simplify the terminology that we use so that um, we, have, we are using layman's terms to convey information that can be acted upon. I would like to note that Monsoon Forum is one such platform at MMS where we interact with the community for improving uh, whether it's for improving weather and climate services, we appreciate the collaboration between our ESCAP and RIMES in supporting us to conduct the National Monsoon Forum and other capacity development uh, activities in the Maldives Indian Security This joint SDG program has been able to consolidate data from multiple sources, including global, regional, and as well as other institutions in the country. This in itself is an achievement. The consolidated data can be used for evidence-based policy making for disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. Some of the activities including the demonstration of impact-based forecasting with simulation of historical events conducted under this project will enhance our capacity in the operationalization of impact-based forecasting in the Maldives increasing the effectiveness of early warning systems in the Maldives. Multi-hazard early warning systems are among the most effective ways of minimizing the impact of severe natural hazards and disasters. The early warning for all initiative is an ambitious target to ensure that everyone in the world is protected from these hazardous weather, water or climate events by the end of 2027. This will also minimize the impact of natural hazards on these vulnerable communities in the region. Finally, I'd like to wish a successful program for all the participants and hope you will be able to contribute significantly to policy level decisions based on evidence. Thank you. Thank you, State Minister. Now I would like to invite the Vice Chancellor of Maldives National University, Dr. Aisha Chehanas Adam, to address our guest. Dr. Aisha Chehanas Adam. Guest of honor. Chief Executive, National Disaster Management Authority, San Hussein, Chancellor of the Maldives National University, Dr. Mahmoud Shaugi, um, Head of South and Southwest Asia Office, UNSCAF, uh, Mikiko Tanaka, other representatives from UN agencies, uh, MNU Council members, heads of MNU, Distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to you all. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to say a few words at the opening ceremony of the capacity building on national and subnational planning for sustainable disaster risk, risk reduction, climate change adaptation and mitigation, and to welcome you all to this symposium and to the Maldives National University. The collaboration between MNU, ESCAP, the National Disaster Management Authority, UNDP, and the Joint SDG Fund has made this event possible, and we are privileged to co-host this event. Today, we come together to focus on building capacities for sustainable disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation at both national and subnational levels. 
It is an honor to have the Chief Executive of National Disaster Management Authority, Kisan Hussain, as the Chief Guest, gracing us with his presence. Thank you. For your we are looking forward for your inspiring words of advice for our presenters and participants of this symposium. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, there is a pressing need for disaster risk reduction in the Maldives a nation that stands at the forefront of climate change induced disasters in the Asia Pacific region. Over the past decades, the Maldives has faced an increasing frequency and intensity of floods and tropical cyclones. To address these challenges, the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific and the United Nations Development Program have jointly implemented a two-year project in the Maldives. This project focuses on integrating disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation into national and subnational development plans. ESCAP has developed an updated risk profile for the Maldives, utilizing high resolution climate project projection information and geospatial techniques to provide technical advisory to the government. The Risk and Resilient Portal by ESCAP offers valuable resources such as land use, land cover maps, climate projections, and population distributions, assisting local councils in disaster management and vulnerability assessment. Today's workshop marks the culmination of these efforts. It focuses on enhancing stakeholder capacity to access data and decision-making tools through ESCAP's Risk and Resilient Portal. This event also provides a platform for discussions on translating available data into policy and action. Distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen, collaboration with UN agencies is instrumental in addressing the unique challenges faced by the Maldives. ESCAP has not only provided technical support, but has also developed guidebooks to assist stakeholders in their efforts. The importance of disaster risk reduction for the Maldives cannot be overstated. It is a shared responsibility and collaborative efforts with UN agencies and other agencies like um, National Disaster Management Authority and um, Ministry of um, Environment and Climate Change is also essential for building resilience, ensuring sustainable development, and safeguarding the well being of the Maldivian people. Let us collectively work towards a future where the Maldives and nations facing similar challenges can thrive despite the adversities posed by climate change. Before I conclude, I want to express my gratitude to all the collaborating agencies, particularly UNSCAP. A special acknowledgement goes to Dr. Leila for her initiation and tireless efforts in orchestrating this crucial capacity building symposium and for approaching MNU to host this event. Thank you. I also extend my thanks to the Research Development Office team and other departments of MNU for their unwavering commitment in ensuring the success of this symposium. Thank you all for your hard work and contributions. I'm confident that this symposium will be a platform for fruitful discussions and knowledge exchange, and I look forward to the enriching sessions ahead. Thank you and wassalam. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. Let me now respectfully invite the Chief Guest, Chief Executive of National Disaster Management Authority, Mr. Hisan Hassan, to deliver his inaugural address. Mr. Hisan Hassan. At last, it's my turn. Director and Head of ESCAP South and Southwest Asia Office, 
is Nikki Tanaka. Chancellor of Maldives National University, Dr. Mahmoud Shaudi. Vice Chancellor of Maldives National University, Dr. Aisha Shainas. Assistant RR of UNDP Maldives, Shifas. Minister of State for Climate Change and Environment, Mr. Ibrahim Mikra. My colleagues from UN agencies, government, and partner agencies. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to you all. I stand before you today with a profound sense of purpose and urgency as we gather for the final workshop on capacity building for national and subnational planning for the sustainable disaster risk reduction, climate change adaptation and mitigation. This event comes at a pivotal moment resonating with recent severe events that have unfolded in the capital city of Mali and across the outer atolls. The floods that inundated our streets and homes, severe as stark reminders of the pressing need to fortify our resilience against the escalating threats of climate change induced disasters. We are acute, acutely aware that half-baked development initiatives exacerbate the impacts of frequent low intensify events, magnifying the toll on lives and livelihoods. The recent floods in Mali alone resulted in household damages exceeding 2.5 million Moldavian rufia, underlining the imperative for more effective risk management strategies. It is evident that better utilization of risk information holds the key to mitigate such damages and steering our nation towards a more resilient future. Distinguished participants, the mold is with its low-lying topography and exposure to hydrometeorological hazards stands as one of the most vulnerable nations globally. With over 80% of our islands situated less than one meter above sea level, the specter of changing climate looms ominously over our existence. The projections are alarming. With global at an unprecedented rate, a significant proportion of our population faces the threat of inundation and displacement. In recognition of these existential threats, the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia Pacific, in collaboration with UNDP Maldives, has embarked on a transformative journey to bolster our nation's resilience through the joint SDG fund. The two-year project aims to integrate DRR and climate change into national and subnational development planning, aligning our efforts with sustainable development goals and agenda 2030. The significance of this endeavor cannot be overstated through meticulous risk profiling and the utilization of cutting edge geospatial techniques, we endeavor to empower our policymakers and stakeholders with the tools and knowledge required to tackle the worsening hazard risk landscape. The risk and resilient portal developed by ESCAP serves as a beacon of hope, providing invaluable insights into land use, climate projections, and population distributions to inform localized disaster management strategies and vulnerable assessments. Participants. Today marks the culmination of a journey marked by collaboration, innovation, and unwavering commitment to safeguarding our nation's future. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Ms. Niki Potanaka. Head and Director of ESCAP South Asia, Southwest Asia Office, and to the entire UN ESCAP team for their steadfast partnership and tireless efforts in advancing our shared goals. Their unwavering support has been instrumental in propelling our collective endeavors towards fusion. I also extend my deepest appreciation to Mr. Enrico from UNDP Maldives 
for his unwavering dedication to advancing our nation's disaster risk reduction efforts. His steadfast support has been a source of inspiration and strength, underscoring the importance of collaboration in effective, meaningful change. As we embark on this collective journey towards resilience, oh, I just finished your part, Henry. <laughs> As we embark on this collective journey towards resilience, I implore each one of you to harness the wealth of data and insights encapsulated with the risk profile and the risk and resilient border. Let us transcend the realm of theoric and transform vision into action, leveraging risk information to inform policy making and development planning. In a fragile and vulnerable country like Maldives, the stakes have never been higher, and the need for informed decision making has never been more pressing. In conclusion, let us seize this moment as a clarion call to action, a call to transcend boundaries, surmount challenges, and forge a path towards a safer, more resilient future for generations to come. Together, let us rise to the challenge fortified by the spirit of collaboration, innovation, and unwavering resolve. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Executive Hisan Hassan, for gracing us with your presence. Now, I would like to invite our UNDP representative Enrico Gavizligo to address our guests. Mr. Enrico Gavizligo. Let me start with a, a deep apology for being extremely late to this. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be very open and frank and, uh, and, and truthful. I just had a call. Uh, and normally with my boss, with uh, Akim Steiner, which is our UNDP administrator, normally they, they're scheduled for one hour. That was started sometimes 7.30, so I had to time it in the way that 8.30 would have been here, punctual. But when, of course, the conversation are interesting and they go on, it lasted half an hour. <laughs> And I tried to alert everybody that I would have been late, but I do apologize for that because, in fact, what I missed is the uh, you know, opening remarks of uh, some of my good colleagues. And I would like to acknowledge, of course, and thank very, I'm very thankful, of course, to Niki Kutanaka, uh, head of uh, SCAP South and Southwest Asia office, for the invitation. This is some work that we've been doing for some time together. So I'm very proud to be here and much, much thankful for, for, for the invitation. But also, of course, uh, Understand uh, Ibrahim Imran, Minister of State of Climate Change. It's uh, it colleagues, yeah, colleagues around. Thanks a lot for for, for being here. We have uh, Mr. Hassan Hassan, Chief Executive National Disaster Management Authority, Mohammed Shubi, Council of Maldives National University. Thanks for hosting us on this today because you know, this is a place where knowledge comes together, and we do this more and more often at the National University, so it's a front of place to be. And of course, uh, we have Ash al Shazin Adam, vice Councilor of Maldives National University, and other colleagues, executives, foreign dignitaries. Everybody, thank you very much. And again, once again, apologies for being late on this. The miss, I, by being rather late on the discussion, is that I miss all the, 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 the good thoughts and, and delivery of my colleagues, with which have been working very closely to us in a joint program offer on the space of the uh, disaster risk reduction, disaster risk management, and everything we do to address some of the recalcitrant and challenges that climate pressure puts on Maldives. You know, I was just um, coming out from the conversation with the UNDP administrator in New York, and we had the entire whole of Asia Pacific around it. Um, with representation from every country of, of the region. And the, it is a very composite, in Asia Pacific, we have a very composite set of challenges that we need to address. And no country is uh, similar to the other one. 
But on the other side, in uh, this poly crisis kind of world, in which all challenges are top up on each other, being this climate uh, related, being this access to finance, being this you know, related to uh, human development at large, and how equity and equality is being addressed, even when you are doing fine on the scoreboard of the macroeconomic indicator, because what is is an upper middle income country. And uh, it's, it's very interesting to see how the composite of thinking is very diverse. And when you have poly crisis and you have a situation of, uh, at times, contradiction in the way policies are addressing the challenges that we are confronted with, then it's where programs like the one of uh, the jointly delivered with UNESCO, UNDP, and the support of NDMA has been for us key because it's just starting those kind of contradictions that we are there to help to find solutions. When we have uh, that kind of pressure that we receive on the shorelines of the of Maldives in every single island where we're confronted with increasing uh, sea, rate, uh, sea, the, 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 the sea rates levels and we are with our, you know, with water, of course, coming into um, places and villages, obstructing the capabilities of that community to actually thrive in development and, and benefit from, from, from nature and, and the activities which are going on. Then is that's where I think we really need to put this policy and recommendation forward in such a way that it becomes then a one point action. Uh, we've been working very hard on a number of uh, initiatives. We like to talk them. We'd like to talk about them in a portfolio approach, which is basically like you know in fashion business, portfolio is like the deck of all your uh, best uh, shots. And our best shots here are the composite of a number of support areas we've been putting forward for Maldives in basically three items. One how do we increase the capabilities of the state as a whole to increase its capturing of resources beyond the atmosphere? You are collectively half a million people. There's so much tax I can put on anybody that would generate the revenues in public finance that would allow you to support the challenges you're confronted to. The expenditure you have every year on addressing climate change and disasters, which are slow onset, therefore much more bothering because they never go away. You don't need the tsunami to, to, to claim uh, help, help. You do need that every year because it's draining the resources regularly every year in a quantity and a, in a, in a deepness that you can't, you, you can't support. So the capabilities of the state to mobilize resources internally from national budget is not enough. So what you're trying to do to the extent possible is trying to see how do we blend, how do we create the condition with whatever support we can mobilize to solicit an investment from somebody that is able and willing to bet on Maldives existence for the future because it's a good investment. So now that is a difficult discussion because I need somewhere from one side say, look, we are flooded, uh, recurring, and still, I think if you invest here, it's going to be a good business. So that's a bit of a contradiction in the offer, right? Because if I'm an investor, I would rather put resources where I'm sure next year I'm going to have no issue whatsoever, being this a tourism sector, fishery sector, as a economic sector. So that's difficult. And the only way we could do it, if like with colleagues at the MA type, Ministry of Environment colleagues around the development community, we managed to actually streamline this policy architecture that is able to actually be implemented. Nice to have a dashboard, nice to have a digital tool, nice to have something out there, but unless you get implemented and you build that confidence of a capital to be invested together with your public resources in that space, then it's very hard to mobilize resources because there are other places where that same kind of money returns life-saving humanitarian crisis, which to be honest and completely frank, is much easier and maybe even more important for us to mobilize for. The expansion side of the equation of your public finance is the other area which we're looking very much into depth, which is can you spend 
public resources in a better in a better way, so that in fact the balancing of the money have and the money spent at the end of the day doesn't end up into an ask of borrowing or an ask of lending, or because I have a deficit into the public sphere. And that's where I think, again, jointly with the UN system and development partners, I think trying to look in the public and financial management system and the way you actually delivering your expenditure is something that it could be useful because in fact, we have an access to a market which is probably most of the time much cheaper than the one you actually have in Iran because of uh, structural constraints. Uh, we've been working, and again, these tools that we have been developing together with the support of uh, ESCAP and the joint program and the entire the, you know, the joint SDG fund for this are tools that are very relevant also beyond the national sphere at the sub-national spheres. And when we actually, and this one, I want to echo some of the you know direction of um, this administration, which has been taken very strongly, which is, you know, when development is put forward, it has to be balanced with the, uh, the, the sustainability of its offer with the capability of nature to support, to stand it. And that's the concept of sustainability. You put something on some on a structure, it's sustainable if it doesn't collapse, right? And that's economic growth. So that's not to be, and we need to find the right equation between the pressure of the economic growth and the indicators of that for the market expansion and on the other side, the capabilities of the nature to sustain what you're offering and putting on top of that. And that's where matters like as the G livability index offering that we've been doing in a couple of places like uh, Ulumale and other ones, which tells you, yes, this is how livable this is. This is how sustainable this offer is, is uh, an area of concern. We have many other uh, uh, initiatives. I won't bother you. I don't have the right to take more time on the floor to late. But I would really like to thank everybody who has uh, put uh, hands together and worked together, colleagues at ESCAP, and colleagues and DMA, Christian and Bain, which is working with us on a daily basis, and all the communities at the uh, sub-national level, which are working with us very hard with a very strained budget and time uh, on this, because as you know, the UN system as a well whole is not a donor, but can help to unlock that kind of lifeline of resources that in fact are very much needed in the US. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Enrico. Uh, next on agenda is the launching of the knowledge product. For this item, I will hand over the stage to Dr. Leila, Associate Economic South and Southwest Asia Office, UN Escape. Dr. Leila. Perfect. We actually have the, the slide here. So a very good morning to uh, all the steam gates that uh, have joined us today. Uh, I'm going to keep it very, very short because I'm going to talk about these products uh, later in the next session, which is an introduction to the project and what we have done. Uh, but just uh, to give you a very brief uh, picture, uh, during this uh, event, this uh, basically uh, this uh, project, uh, we have developed a few manuals and guidelines for uh, different use, technical and non-technical use of the products that have been produced and uh, methodologies, technologies that have been introduced to Maldives. Uh, among those, there are four, uh, four products that uh, you can see the titles here. Uh, two of them, uh, the first two, uh, introduction to QGIS and uh, uh, just, uh, uh, GIS systems uh, is already finalized, uh, as well as the impact-based forecasting guidebook. And the other two land use uh, analysis, as well as the uh, guidebook to, uh, to uh, use of the risk and resilient portal is in the final uh, stage, waiting for the user review uh, to ensure that uh, we don't need to uh, add any more information. Uh, so we have the uh, printout versions of the uh, first two manuals to share with uh, 
uh, again, sample because we want to be, uh, you know, environmental friendly. So there's not going to be that many uh, hard print from this document. So I'm going to be sharing uh, the link to all of the documents in the next session uh, so that you can actually get access to all of them. But I would like to ask uh, each and every one of the uh, singets to uh, come to the um, basically a stage and receive one of the copies for their uh, esteem institution um, to have as a sample of some of the work that was done uh, for this project. Um, so uh, maybe if the MC can help me uh, just call up uh, every one of the guests and then from the top, I can uh, deliver the 